Do you hear that? The sound of people flipping over their calendars and another month starting? Or is it the sound of every booktuber, book talker, and book influencer on the internet making wrap up and TBR videos? Was that cringy? I think it was. Either way, May has ended and June has just begun. So it's time for me to tell you about the books I read in May, the books I meant to read in May that I didn't get round to, and the books that I intend to, not hope to, intend to read in June. Because June is going to be the first month I get through my monthly TBR. I've decided. I think I said the same thing at the beginning of May, but here we are. May was actually another successful reading month for me. I'll hold them this way because it's slightly more. Does it build suspense or is it just a bit cringy? I read seven books in May. If you count them, these are six because one was on my Kindle. I'm not lying to you. I read seven books in May, so let's go in a chronological order. May is without a doubt the most successful reading month I've had. I met, I didn't exceed, I met my most successful reading month number of books finished again. That was a really wordy way of saying I finished seven books in April, that was the most books I met I read in one month and I did the same again in May. But the ratings on these books were significantly higher. I found four five star books back to back. It was incredible. It makes up for the crappy start I had at the beginning of this year. But firstly we had an audiobook that I started in April and finished off in May, and that was To Hate Adam Connor by Ella Mays. This is the second book in the Love and Hate duology that started with To Love Jason Thorne. I rated this four stars. I actually really enjoyed it. Considering I went into the first book, To Love Jason Thorne, with no expectations. I was at best hoping for a three star romance and I got a below average three star romance but that's okay because that's basically what I was expecting. And I was expecting much the same from this. This is the story of the female main character from the first book's best friend and their neighbour because the best friend lives with the couple from the first book and spies on their neighbour as you can see from the front cover. It's another celebrity romance but it's enemies to lovers rather than friends to childhood friends to lovers and I just like this so much more. I thought the tension was so so juicy, I thought it felt so tangible and real and I thought the characters just felt generally more fleshed out. I find with enemies to lovers it can be very hit and miss as to whether the enemies aspect of the relationship feels authentic because I think in a especially in a contemporary romance having enemies in this day and age is not something that people tend to have but these two definitely have an animosity against each other and it feels really grounded and it makes sense. They're not arch nemesis in the way that superheroes have enemies but they have a reason to dislike each other and you can feel or oh, I really felt that. I really enjoyed it. I love the resolution. It was a lovely, easy, contemporary romance to listen, so I rated it four stars. What a great way to start the month. Then we have the physical book that kind of tied over from April. I started this in April, it was on my April TBR, but I only got around to finishing it in, not got round to, I didn't quite finish it before the end of April, so I finished it in May, and that was The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. This is Holly Jackson's newest release. It's a standalone YA mystery thriller, and it's amazing. I rated it five stars. I just was obsessed from page one. Don't get me wrong, I didn't have a nice time while I was reading it. I was stressed the entire time. My chest hurt, my butt was clenched. I was on the edge of my proverbial seat because I wasn't on a seat, I was lying in my bed. But I loved this book so much. The opening seat, well the premise is Rachel Price is a woman who disappears and reappears that's not a spoiler, it's in the title, but the only person who was there when she disappeared was her daughter Belle, who was two at the time. So this crime literally has a witness, but she was too young to recall or actually be of any use with the, within the investigation. And Belle is now 18, it's been 16 years since Rachel first disappeared, and obviously she's grown up in the shadow of this investigation. She's always been Rachel's daughter or the daughter of the woman that went missing. The Price family are now doing a documentary about the disappearance of Rachel Price when, during the filming of the documentary, Rachel Price reappears, which obviously makes it hugely more exciting for the documentary team. But the very first scene of the book is Belle doing an interview with the documentary team. You're literally dropped into the story you've got all the context you need from the title and the premise really you know that Belle's daughter and you get kind of told the main information 
from Belle and in, just even on that first page Belle just felt so real as a character the documentary team was super fun there was tiny little elements of romance that of course my little romance heart latched onto and I absolutely adored honestly this was just incredible I absolutely adored it I honestly am just obsessed absolutely obsessed it was so good so so good five stars absolutely no question it was five stars then another audiobook listen I picked this one because I had it on my audible and again I have it also on my physical TBR so it was two birds one stone malarkey so the next book I read was my first ever Taylor Jenkins read book and it was Daisy Jones and the Six this has been on my radar for a very long time I believe I picked this physical book up in 2021 and then I heard that the audiobook was the best way to engage with the story so I didn't read the physical edition I waited used an audible credit and I listened to it as an audiobook and I wholeheartedly stand by that opinion it's the first audiobook I think I've ever listened to where I actually think I would have enjoyed reading the physical copy less because the whole thing is told it the whole story is told in an interview style but it's in a it's an interview with loads of participants and rather than being question answer question answer it's like the participants of the interview are telling the story so in the audiobook sense I don't think within the whole book there's more than maybe five minutes where there's only one character's voice quite often it's one sentence or one paragraph and then the character changes all the time and I think reading that physically would have been quite disjointed whereas listening to that as an audio book it felt real it genuinely felt like I was listening to a documentary it's a full cast audio book so every character has their own voice actor and it was done so impeccably well it had so much heart I often had to remind myself that this wasn't a non-fiction documentary it was incredibly intelligently written literary fiction and I don't normally like literary fiction but this tackled some really heavy topics as well as being fun and about um a band and music in the 70s so it was yeah it was super super fun i need to find out whether the show is worth watching in comparison to the book because i've heard good things about the show but i've only ever heard incredible things about the book i put this book on my list of all-time favorite books i have a list on my phone of my go-to favorite books and this book has been added to that list obviously I rated it five stars it's become one of my favorite books of all time so I don't know if watching the show is just going to be a letdown please do let me know if you have read the book and watched the show whether it's worth watching the show in the comments or whether it's one I should give a miss Daisy Jones and the Six five stars no question then we have my kindle read for the month this is another one that was on my April TBR and I only started reading this because I was co-reading another book by listening to the audiobook on audible and reading the physical book but I was also listening to the audiobook of Daisy Jones and the Six on audible and I didn't like switching between two audiobooks on the same platform normally if I'm co-reading and listening to an audiobook I'm doing one on Spotify and one on audible but I didn't like switching between the two books on audible because I listened to them at different speeds which sounds really petty but having to remember to change it every time was really inconvenient especially when I was driving and then I realized I was listening to one book too fast or one book too slow and it just it annoyed me so I was like okay I'm just gonna power through finish Daisy Jones and the Six and then I'll go back to co-reading once I've done that so I'm only listening to one book on Audible so I needed a physical book to read whilst I was finishing off this audiobook so I decided to turn to my Kindle and I picked up Funny Story by Emily Henry which was a new release that came out in April so it was on my April TBR so I was only reading it one month late and I absolutely adored it I read the whole thing in a week which is really fast for me I just loved Emily Henry's writing I, I like that she walks the line between literary fiction and contemporary romance really really evenly the book feels really kind of delicately and artistically written whilst also having the key features of like a rom-com I genuinely did find it funny there were moments where I laughed out loud um, you can always tell that I'm really enjoying a book when my husband can figure it out because I have quite the resting bitch face so normally when I'm reading a book he has to go you're having a nice time but with this one he knew I was having a nice time 
there was no question about it. I, yeah, absolutely devoured this book. And I had a funny relationship with Emily Henry before because I've only read one Emily Henry book before this one, which was Beach Read, which I absolutely adored. I believe it was the first ever audiobook I ever listened to and I rated it five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. I kind of built it up in my head that I was an Emily Henry fan, but then there was a part of me that kept remembering I've only read one book and one book does not a fan make. So there was kind of more and more pressure with the more Emily Henry books that came out but I'd seen so much hype around Funny Story. Everyone I saw that had received an arc of Funny Story absolutely adored it. There's one girl on TikTok that I follow who's doing one of those ratings blankets where she crochets a row with a certain colour of wool for every book she reads this year and she's reread Funny Story maybe four times in a month. She listened to the audiobook just kind of over and over again and I can honestly see why. It was, this was so much, it was fun, but it was kind of hard hitting at the same time. There was kind of deeper issues going on, which is I think something that Emily's, Henry's really good at. But also the whole situation was absolutely ridiculous because the protagonist Daphne, her fiance, has gone on his stag do and his childhood best friend, Petra, has confessed that she's in love with him whilst also having a boyfriend. So Petra and Peter, the exes, run off together and Daphne has no choice because she's up to her whole life to move back to Peter's hometown. She has a job, she, but she has nowhere to live. So she ends up moving in with her ex-fiance's new girlfriend's ex-boyfriend, Miles. So Daphne and Miles end up living together, both hot off the back of this breakup. They're both moping, they're both feeling pretty sorry for themselves. They don't actually communicate or talk to each other at all in the first few months of living together. But then they start to build up a little relationship and it was just so much fun. It was so much fun to watch them get to know each other and fall in love. And I loved it, I loved it so much. So that became the third book in my five star streak. Then I went back to the book I was co-reading because by that point I'd finished Daisy Jones and the Six and I'd finished Funny Story. So I went back to The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini, which was my book club pick for this month. The premise of my book club, if you aren't familiar, is that when my husband and I got married, we asked our guests to gift us a copy of their favourite book and in an endeavour to read them all, I set up this book club, which in reality is generally just me. Um, and we take it in turns each month to choose a book from the wedding library and I read them and he doesn't. This was my husband's pick and I was intimidated by this because this is a modern classic, no question. This book came out in 2003, so it's only 20 years old, which is very modern in terms of classics, but it was that literary, historical, heavy topic that I was intimidated by. And realistically, I had no reason to be because the style, the narrative style of this book is incredibly accessible and whilst the topic is really heavy it's a really interesting insight into a culture that many of us in the west are not familiar with at all there's a lot of stereotypes and what we think is understanding of how people in afghanistan and asian countries in general live but you don't know unless you live there do you so it was really insightful it was really interesting but also it was really well told it was an incredibly sad story but it wasn't the protagonist that had the super sad story so that was a really interesting perspective but there was also really interesting takes on privilege and classism and sexism and it was genuinely a really interesting and enjoyable isn't the right word it was a really important read but i didn't have a good time while i was reading it it's a bit like the reappearance of Rachel Price where I didn't enjoy reading the book but it was definitely five stars except this one's more important than the reappearance of Rachel Price. I understand why this is a modern classic it's definitely made its cultural markers and I thoroughly recommend it but again I also thoroughly recommend the audiobook because it is narrated by the author himself so you get the authentic accents and the authentic um, pronunciations of all the Afghan words that otherwise if you're anything like me you would have had no idea how to pronounce so i thoroughly enjoyed co-reading this one and i also rated this five stars very unexpectedly but undoubtedly five stars then on to the last two books i started reading this one just before i went to comic con last weekend in this last week of the month i was set myself this little challenge where i was going to try and finish my monthly tbr in the remaining days before the month ended so i ended up trying to read let's call it five and a half books in four days. Spoilers, I was unsuccessful, but the next book I finished was 
Enid Blyton's The Famous Five, the fifth book in the Famous Five series, which is like a subsidiary of the Wedding Book Club because my mum gave us a box set of the Famous Five books as part of her wedding gift to us. And rather than reading 10 Famous Five books back to back, I've decided to read one a month. So in the fifth month of the year, I read the fifth book in the series, which was Five Girls in a Caravan. I rated it three stars. It was fine. It was a little bit slow and a bit bland in places, but it's a children's book that was originally written in the 1940s and I'm a 27 year old woman living in 2024 so I'm not the target market. It was a palate cleanser. I managed to finish most of it in an afternoon when I started doing my binge reading to try and finish my TBR. So it got that binge reading off to a good start because I managed to read like 160 pages of this in one sit, not in one sitting, in one afternoon. It was three stars. It broke my five star streak but in a way it was the best way to break my five star streak because I knew it was never going to be five stars. Rather than choosing a book because I think I'm going to love it and being disappointed by it, I'm glad I had a book that I knew I would rate three stars. I hope that makes sense. My battery light is flashing, but we're just gonna see how far we can get. So when I started this challenge to try and finish my monthly TBR in the last four days of the month, because I did want to try and give myself longer, but uh, shock horror, I didn't do that. I did the maths and I needed to read just short of 500 pages a day to be able to finish my challenge on time. Except I don't think I've ever read that much in a day, not even when I was on my honeymoon and I literally did nothing but read all day. But it did mean that I read more in those last four days of the month than I traditionally would have. So I did manage to squeeze in, let's call it one and a half books, but I managed to finish one more book before the end of the month. And that was my first Illumicrote read of the year. I've been getting the Illumicrote subscription for about nine months now, and I just haven't got round to making them a priority on my TBR at all this year so this is the first one i've read so far and unfortunately it was incredibly disappointing the book was to gaze upon wicked gods by molly x chang i rated it two stars i've heard that there's controversy about this book and i don't really understand why because i've not seen any of this controversy online and whenever i try to google it i can't find anything there's talks about colonialism but i feel like the colonialism colonialism is very well declared in this book so i don't really I've not looked into it. Well, I have tried to look into it. I can't find anything to tell me more about why this is controversial, but I read it anyway. I co-read this by listening to the audiobook on Spotify, and I'm glad I did because, again, this is another book that's based in a culture that I am obviously not part of. This is a fantasy book where the main character and the nation she lives in is inspired by ancient China? or like a semi-historical China. There's aspects of China in this book and there's elements of the Chinese language within the book and having the audiobook meant that again I got the authentic pronunciation of those and, a, and some of those words are written in this book in the Chinese characters which I obviously can't read so it was nice to hear those and actually kind of feel a little bit more immersed in the story but that's just about where the enjoyment ends because while the premise of this was really cool I don't think the execution was very well done the writing style felt very tell not show and that made the speech feel incredibly inauthentic to me it felt like you know in an ad on TV when someone is trying to make something part of a conversation but there's no way to authentically make that ad part of a conversation so it sounds really staged. The whole world building feels like a staged ad. The world building just wasn't very well done and there were elements of it that were trying to be integrated into the into the speech but it wasn't very well done and all round the world just didn't feel built at all. It all felt very surface level and then I saw a really interesting review on Storygraph actually that said the kind of antagonists within this book is that um, the historical China is attacked from a veil in the sky by a futuristic Roman Empire but there's no reason for them to be Roman. There's nothing that characterises them as Romans other than the fact that their surname is Augustus. Like, it sounds a bit Roman Empire-ish. But other than that, the technology is modernised and it's nothing like the Roman Empire that, you know, we would have learnt about in school. So there was no reason for them to be Roman. And it just didn't quite make sense. Nothing about this quite made sense. And I think the real tell for me is that normally when a book is the first in a series, I will, even if I don't like it, I will read the whole series because there's a part of me that just wants to know how it ends. That's why I read the entire Hush Hush series. 
and I think the average rating I gave those books was maybe two stars, optimistically. I did not enjoy that series at all, but there was a tiny part of me that just wondered how it ended. And with this, I just don't care. I just found that I was completely indifferent to the characters. The world building was so flat that I have no interest in saving it. I just don't have any interest in finishing this series at all, and I feel like that's very telling on my opinion of it. So I rated it two stars, and that was to gaze upon wicked gods so that was the seven books i did manage to finish in may with those seven books that means that out of my seven book tbr only three of them were on my tbr the first four books i read this month were not on my tbr two of them were leftovers from books that i started in april so that makes sense two of them were not <laughs> so that makes less sense. I did start reading another book on my physical TBR and that was The Prospects by Katie Hoffman which is my Afterlight subscription book and I started this on the 30th when I was doing my binge reading and I did get halfway through but on the night of the last night of the month on 31st of May I was 120 odd pages off from actually finishing this book in time so I have since finished this book but I didn't finish it in May so I'll be talking about it in my weekly vlogs if you're interested in watching those or in my next wrap up but technically I did finish this just not in May. So the three books that I definitely didn't get round to were the two books from my 24 in 2024 list which were 16 Souls by Rosie Talbot and Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. The way that I'm choosing how I'm reading my 24 in 2024 for this year is I've got one of those spinners set up on my computer and each month I'm picking two to put on my TBR and inevitably not read in most cases. So these will be going back on that list but I do think I will end up listening to Radio Silence because I used an audible credit on like an omnibus of three of Alice Oseman's books in one audible book so I think that's going to be my next audiobook read so I probably will get around to reading this next month but it's not on my TBR anymore. And the other book that I didn't get around to reading this month was my new release and that is Can't Spell to Reason Without Tea by Rebecca Thorne. I bought this because I thought the edges were stunning and they are stunning I mean just look at them they're beautiful but I just ran out of time so this will be going on my leftover TBR and hopefully I'll get to it at some point before the end of the year. And then, because this video definitely isn't long enough already, let's have a quick look at my physical, not my physical, my monthly TBR for the month of June. First up from my book club, I will be reading A Sense of Freedom by Jimmy Boyle. This is a book that my uncle gave me. Jimmy Boyle was, actually, I'm going to read what my uncle wrote at the beginning because it, I think it's the best summary of the book. A true story about the most wanted criminal in Scotland who eventually turned his life around. So this is a non-fiction book, uh, this is an original copy from 1982 so I'm very conscious that when I read it I would like the pages to not fall apart but I think my favourite thing about the book so far having not started it is that at the back there is a list of other books that you can order and all the prices are listed here and all of the books are £1.50, one of them is 95p, £1.25, £1.75 so oh one of them's two pound ninety five pregnancy by gordon bourne was a it was an expensive one <gasps> five pound ninety five for the 35 millimeter photographer's handbook by julian calder and john garrett but i find that kind of thing really fascinating obviously not a book that would have been on my radar if it weren't for this uh little wedding project book club thing but either way it will be my first non-fiction book of the year and I'm intimidated by it but I am looking forward to reading it. It wasn't the battery that got me it was the SD card filling up so if I'm at a slightly different angle that is why. For my 24 and 2024 picks for this month I used the spinner again I have the footage. My first pick was Guild by Raven Kennedy. I picked this up for three pounds at the in the sales section of the Coventry Waterstones because it has this tiny bit of damage to the spine of the book but I'm not bothered. I'm, I'm a spine breaker anyway, so it doesn't matter. I don't really know anything about this book. Oh, it's something to do with King Midas, so it's a little bit Greek, which we know is one of my favourite things. But I know that the Plated Prisoner series is super popular, and I have been... <laughs> I've been recommended this book from a friend in what I call real life rather than book life on the internet. Um, so that says a lot to me. Um, 
I've had this on my radar for a really long time and I feel like it might be dangerous to get into it now because I know this is a five book series so if I really enjoy it there's four more books for me to read but I'm excited to finally get around to this and finally understand the hype. And then the other book from my 24 in 2024 list was The Book of Two Ways by Jodie Pico. I have attempted to read this before and I softly left it but I think at that point in my reading journey I was still just finding my way into adult fiction. I was kind of just of the age where I preferred YA or new adult and I was still kind of new to the adult world of fiction and I think I am more of a broader reader now. It's something to do with Egypt, something to do with archaeology maybe, but I have read another Jodie Pico book and I did enjoy it even though it wasn't quite my vibe so looking forward to reading this one and I will probably find the audiobook on Spotify or something. Then normally I would include an Illumicrate subscription book in this list but there's been an issue with the May box so it's not been delivered in the usual time span and I think I saw an announcement from Illumicrate that it won't be delivered until after the June box so I'm going to have a bonus Illumicrate book at some point in my future. However my Afterlight subscription arrived with no problem so my Afterlight book that I will be reading this month is One Last Shot by Betty Coyote. I'm still pronouncing that surname wrong I'm so sure of it but I have no idea how to pronounce it. I'm very sorry. This is a uh, easy cheesy contemporary romance I'm hoping. It's set in the backdrop of Italy, it's about a supermodel and a photographer, a fashion photographer who set up a marriage pact as teenagers and the notification has just popped up on the female main character's phone. It's kind of one last shot at the only relationship that, the, what does she, how does she word it? She realises she has a chance to rekindle the only relationship that ever really made sense. The, I don't know, it sounds like an easy cheesy romance and for the summer weather in the UK this just feels like perfect timing and the end paper artwork seems to all be set in some sort of bakery and that sounds very exciting to me. I'm really looking forward to reading this one. I think this artwork is just stunning and the whole thing is wrap around so it wraps around the spine into this lovely view of the Italian coast but it also wraps around to the sprayed edges. I'm obsessed with these, absolutely obsessed. Oh yeah and part of the book club, the Famous Five book that I'm going to be reading this month is the sixth book in the Famous Five series and that is Five on Kieran Island again except I feel like I'm getting really bored with this series now and now that I have read a couple of these books kind of predominantly in one sitting my plan is to wait until like the penultimate day of the month and then just sit and binge the whole thing and I think it would be nice to set aside a day for myself to do nothing but reading but also to get this done in one go. I think that's going to be my plan going forward with these books but that's the fifth book on my TBR for June and then last but not least we have the new release that's coming out in June that I have pre-ordered. I'm never very good at wording that sentence. The book I've pre-ordered that comes out in June is Not In Love by Ali Hazelwood and I am so excited for it. I did like Ali Hazelwood's YA debut and I did like her paranormal debut but they weren't the five star books that I, I, I loved with The Love Hypothesis and Love On The Brain so I'm really excited to get back to the world of Ali Hazelwood's adult STEM contemporary romances. I'm just so excited. I've pre-ordered this on my Kindle. I may or may not pick up a physical edition from somewhere like The Works. No promises can be made. I did pick up a physical copy of Funny Story when I was in Sainsbury's the other day because they had this hardback for... Oh, I should have held that up when I was talking about it. Why am I so dumb? Wow. This was £9 in Sainsbury's. It doesn't have the sprayed edges that the Waterstones edition has, but I don't think the sprayed edges on the Waterstones edition are that groundbreaking, so... I saved myself some money. Either way, I'm an idiot. I do actually own this book, but I bought it after I read it on my Kindle, so it doesn't add to my TBR and it doesn't break my book buying ban. Well, it does break my book buying ban, but my book buying ban, not my book buying bran, is more about not adding books to my TBR, so that doesn't add a book to my TBR, so, 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 so. I'm rambling. Those are all the books that I read in May, that I didn't read in May, and that I hope to read in June. This video has perhaps turned out a bit longer than I anticipated, but I feel like a lot of the booktubers I watch read 15 plus books in a month, so when I only read seven, and I say only, only in the way of direct comparison and not as a belittling thing about myself. I'm so proud that I read seven books this month. So I thought lumping these two videos together might compensate for that, but what I may have done is made a video that's too long. But either way, I hope you enjoyed. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're reading a great book and I'll see you at some point for another bookish video. Bye.